Inside the WEC following a Highlander 99-53 win, we begin with the RAF report. I'm joined by second-year top assistant Jeff Rafferty. Uh, Highlanders taking care of business. You know, sometimes you worry about the, the mentality going into a D3 game, but it seemed like after a, a little bit of a sluggish start, you guys really rolled. Yeah, we did, and, and you know, you never know. Again, you have the holiday right now coming, uh, but our guys just got done with finals last night, this morning, whatever. Um, so you just want to – these games are so important before a break, and this is the only break our guys will get all year. We'll give them three days now, two or three days, but – Coming out of finals and, and going into a break and guys flying out and seeing family and things like that, it's so important that everybody's ready to play, but really that start in five, you know what I mean? And, and you know, that you, you, you worry that they were, you know, they're looking at it like it's a D3 game, it's a D3 game. But our, I think our starters came out ready to go, you know, and, and kind of set the tone. Now the bench in the first half I didn't think was real good. Um, but they snapped out of it in the second half, and, you know, and, and we put together a team effort and uh, – Good to win, you know, good to win the game. Well, you mentioned the starters. I was going to go somewhere else, but now that we're on the, on the subject, DeAndre Wilson, uh, the consistency continues to amaze me because it seems like he's been very efficient. He knows what to do with the rock, and we're seeing a kid in his first year of Division One basketball as a junior transfer develop nicely into the system. Yeah, I mean, 15 points tonight uh, on six or seven shots, I guess it was. Five for seven from the field, 15 points, you know, three assists, one turnover. Um, and again, we've talked about it. He's, he's a different type of player for us, and that's become very important for us when our offense gets stagnant. He's a guy that can go get a bucket. Shondell Jones had another game. You see the three right there. Is he getting more comfortable? Because to me, from an outside perspective, watching game after game, I'm seeing a kid who's really starting to understand uh, how to play basketball at this level and doing a pretty good job at it. Yeah, you know, he, uh, I thought Shondell's offensive floor game was very good tonight. He had eight points and, and uh, five or six rebounds, it says here. Um, defensively, I didn't think he was real good in the first half, and we're really working on that with him. Uh, but, but in the second half, I thought he came back and really uh, gave us a great effort on, on both ends of the court. How did the team get better from this game today? How did the team get better? Yeah. Well, I think, well, you, you know, you played all 13 guys, um, so guys got extended minutes, you know. Um, we're still figuring this rotation out 12 or 13 games in. But it's important that, that some of the younger guys in particular and some of the guys maybe that haven't played as much early on that they get comfortable playing longer stretches. Um, you know, I guess we can use as an example tonight, you use San Antonio Brinson, you use Taj Price, all right? Those guys both got extended minutes tonight. Um, you know, and they're not only going in there for a two- or three-minute span, go play six minutes, you know what I mean? And, and challenge yourself to come back with four or five rebounds, you know? So I thought both of their efforts, you know, while I'm on them, um, and David Cackery. So those three guys played, played more extended minutes tonight. David was very, uh, you know, we all know about his confidence level, which is terrific. Um, you know, but he was very aggressive offensively, and then I thought the other two were really good defensively. So, Yeah, I mean, Kakaris was on uh, one end or the other, the two most exciting plays today. Uh, he had a play in the open court on a putback, streaking down the lane where he batted it in. Then he fed uh, Brinson on a long alley-oop. Right. Uh, good showing. And it's going to get tough here the final two games. Let's start uh, with University of Buffalo. What can you tell us about that team and, and the preparation going into that game, which will be on Thursday up at UB? Well, they're, 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 uh, they're a very good mid-major program. And, and when I was at Delaware a few years back, we actually traveled up there. It's not an easy trip to make. You know, plus it's right after the holiday, the weather up there, da 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 you can come up with a million different things. But once you get up there, they have a great atmosphere, and, and the fans bring it, and the, and the players bring it. Uh, they're a different type of team. they got a lot of transfers, a lot of junior college kids. They're going to play up-tempo. They're grimy and physical on defense. So, you know, this will be good to get away from each other for a couple of days, everyone get home and, and see their families. And when we, we come back on, uh, I guess, Tuesday afternoon, we got to really lock in there for a couple of days and travel up there on uh, – on Wednesday and, and play Thursday, I guess. Would it mean a lot to have one more win to get that first road win under your belt to finish above 500 in non-conference play prior to starting? I, I think that's very important, and I think we, we got two opportunities, you know, and, and Buffalo will be a very, very tall task, but but we need to go up there and prepare to win and, and try to steal one on the road, and then after that we have, you know, Brown on the right after the New Year. So, you know, that's the deal. We've got to try to get that first elusive road win. Well, let's hope we do it. You know, I was kind of hoping you'd come out here with the jacket today. You had a very festive plaid jacket, a new one. I hadn't seen that one in a while. Well, that's, that's actually my – that's kind of one of my spring go-tos. 
Um, but I figured with the uh, with the holiday season, I could mix some green. I wore the green top. I got and, the memo. Yeah, green and red. You know, I, I <laughs> thought I could I could get away with it today because of the holiday season. And, and what do you want under that Christmas tree when you come down uh, and, and gather around? What, what does Coach Raff want under that tree? Just a couple hours with my wife and kids, to be honest with you. That's just <laughs> sitting on the couch for a couple hours and just relaxing and watching some basketball and uh, spending time with the family. So. This is a man that just got off the road back for today's game and is right back on the road recruiting. But while you were here, a nice 99-53 victory. Uh, from all of us at ESPN3, Coach Raff, we thank you for your insights, but we really want to wish you a uh, terrific, uh, happy, and healthy uh, holiday season and uh, looking forward to finishing out non-conference play. Appreciate it very much. And to all of our fans out there and ESPN watchers, uh, have a great holiday. Again, that's Jeff Rafferty, second-year assistant, top assistant here under Brian Kennedy. And this is The Raff Report. Thanks for watching.